Oh. What's going on guys? Uh, I'm gonna tie a pink intruder, pinkish, uh, pink and red. I have, uh, what shank is this? I don't remember. Anyways, got some shank, 25 millimeter. I'm also running some Senyo intruder wire, size large, which is right here, and a size two Gamakatsu octopus hook. There's the stinger. I like to make sure there's enough gap that I can replace this hook if I need to, but I don't want it too long. So these hooks are naturally curved, um, so I like to turn them a little bit so the point will stick straight up. So another um, thing I like to do is stick some type of eraser or something on this hook point. I don't know how many times I've stuck myself and lifted the vise off the table and just, it's no fun. So that's helpful. Uh, once you have the intruder wire, I like to go through the eye and then pull it back and wrap over it. That just guarantees that this is not gonna get pulled out if a fish hits it real hard, which hopefully they will. Uh, so I'll trim the excess. And these wires, when you cut them, are real sharp, so be careful not to cut your thread. Do some lighter tension wraps mm -hmm. until you've covered it, and then cover the rest. So that looks good. I like that. Next, I'm just totally winging this fly. I'm thinking of adding some marabou, um, some pink, maybe some peach, uh, and then I will be adding some uh, probably red, purple, and pink uh, ostrich. And the shoulders will be built with some arctic foxtail, and we'll see. So I like to make a little bit of a dubbing loop right away just to build a little bit of bulk. This is uh, Ice Dub in Midnight Haze. I really like this color. It's kind of blue, turquoise-y, a little bit of purple. It's a good steelhead color. Cool. Um, next, I'm gonna throw a couple wraps of UV polar chenille in, how about rust? is also a pretty sweet color. It's copper with little bits of purple UV highlights. We'll just do a few wraps because I don't want to crowd the head. So touching wraps. I don't know how many that is. We'll end there. That's plenty. So this has been kind of a general intruder recipe that I've been using. You can use whatever colors you want. I kind of like that little bit of darker underbelly so when the fly pulsates it shows a little more flash but it's not super flashy. So next I'm gonna make a dubbing loop. Oh, I guess I didn't talk about my thread. I think this is 210 denier um, thread which is a little more useful when doing these dubbing loops that it's thicker. Uh, you can use some 140, but it will probably break if you're throwing it in the loop. So, loop is ready. Um, Arctic Fox is next. So this stuff is just super dense and it really repels the water, so it, it helps hold up all the rest of the material. So kind of my thought process is the blue flash just to hold up the polar chenille just a little bit. And then the polar chenille is just kind of your underlying flash. Um, but this is your main material to create your shoulders to hold up all the marabou and flashaboo and ostrich and all that stuff that I'm gonna put on next. 
and I will use a chip clip um, to pinch it off to stick it in the dubbing loop. I'm actually going to add a little bit of ice dub to this dubbing loop. I'll show you once I get her stuck in here. Yeah, so it'll look a little bit like something like that. And just stick it in the dubbing loop. Like that. I like that. And then generally I'll come in and clip this bottom side. So there's just maybe a centimeter sticking up. I'll hold it with your finger and then spin. All right, I like it. Um, this, if you, you can just polymer it on the shank, it'll work fine, but the tighter you make your wraps, uh, the more it will stand straight up, which is really the whole point of this, is to add the Arctic Fox for your shoulders. So I like to get that really tight so you can see your thread all the way through the base, that looks pretty good. And then start wrapping. I'll do a couple forward and then work my way back. And now these should be pretty tight and touching. Perfect. Double that back so it doesn't come out. Thread. And then... So I like the look of that ice dub in there. Gives it a little more flash uh, kind of built in throughout the whole fly. But most of this will get covered up. So I like that. I kind of like it to end just where the hook starts because the rest of our materials are going to bleed into the hook. Um, so next, I'm going to add a little bit of wing and flash. Mm, that's probably too much. A little bit of wing and flash. So all this should be pretty subtle. I'm not trying to make a really flashy fly, um, but I do want just little bits of sparkle. That's probably more for me than the fish, but I think it makes it look good. I like that. If I didn't have the eraser on, I would have stuck my thumb into the hook by now. So happy I did that. I'm going to do, um, how bright do I want this? I'm going to do one uh, strung marabou and peach, and then I'm going to make a dubbing loop with some ostrich, and then I'm going to finish it up with some fluorescent pink. I want to find one of these that is, doesn't have a really thick stem. Okay. Kind of like the color on this side. Should have done this beforehand. Let go. Let go. Cool. So this is not going to be a huge bulky layer. All right. So I'm just going to tie this in by the tip. And then I'm going to strip off the bottom half inch or so. Grab that with my hackle pliers and then just palmer it on. This one, unlike the uh, Arctic Fox, instead of having them real close and touching, I like to work my way up with the Marabou since it's fairly delicate. If I do my wraps more forward, then I can come back and cover them up with thread and it just makes the whole fly a little more durable. Ooh, I'm liking that. Probably could have done fluorescent pink and then peach on in front of it, but that's all right. Can make another one. Next, this part's 
probably, actually I'm gonna throw a little bit more flash in purple. I did not even measure it, but that's about as, about the perfect length. Maybe a little long. So, I like that. Next, uh, we can throw some ostrich in a dubbing loop. So there's a couple different ways of doing this. You can just rip off some plumes and just tie them in where you like. Um, but it's, I don't know, it's all right. It's a pretty good method. Um, or I can put these in a dubbing loop and it distributes them a little more evenly, but it can also be a pretty big pain <laughs> to get these not to tangle in a dubbing loop. We'll try the dubbing loop way. I make my loop. I'm getting a little wild with the thread here. I try not to make too bulky wraps up here because when you start palmering over it, it tends to slide forward and it just makes it a little messy. But I think we'll be okay. I don't know if that purple, hot pink. There's a couple different ways you could do this. You could just stack it so it's all, all the colors are mixed. But when we make all these loops, it's going to go from light pink to this darker pink. I think I'm going to put red first so it's not as, doesn't stand out quite as much. Well, it's going to be real hard to put in a loop. Also, don't breathe on your ostrich. That was almost a disaster. I guess we are mixing them. You can't see my face right now, but I'm kind of freaking out. This is <laughs> not going as smoothly as it could. That's fine. Everything's fine. Okay, so back to the chip clip. I think you can kind of see these curls. I'm going to push them all to where I want them in the loop and grab them with the chip clip. Most of them. Half of them. Yeah, that works out. So you can see it goes from kind of the purple to the pink to the red. Uh, before I get too crazy. So, throw curls in. Oh, I went backwards. Uh, yeah, that's fine. So when I said I was gonna put the red in the back, that's not what I ended up doing. <laughs> so we got purple in the back, then the light pink, then the red up front, which is fine because we're gonna cover it up with fluorescent hot pink anyways. So it's pretty important to get these so they are all in one line and not crossed because when I spin this and they're crossed, it's gonna turn into a giant mess. And again, I'm gonna come and cut these butts off. So I'm gonna go real slow. Wish me luck. Oh my gosh, this just might turn into a fly. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, so you can test. I just pulled on that one hurl and it's starting to pull through. So I'm gonna give it one more or two more spins. When you make a dubbing loop, it always tightens up from the side closer to the spinning tool than your vise. So it's important to make sure all these hurls closer to your shank or your hook are tight before you start wrapping it on. So that's good. Looks a little messy. So we can just start tying this on. 
Getting real close to the camera here. Okay. Ooh, I actually like that red in front. As Bob Ross would say, a happy little mistake. How's that looking? A little crazy. That's all right. So if I wanted another little bit of flash, I could make another dubbing loop um, just with some ice dub, which I kind of like that look. You get a little more sparkle underneath. Let's do some purple. So I could add another dubbing loop, or I can just veil this over, catch it, wrap it on there. Ooh. Wrap it on there. Okay. Your bodkin, let's see. Let's turn it out to be kind of a crazy looking fly. All right, all we have is one more hackle of fluorescent pink left and we are good to go. So I just gotta find another. Oh, these are all bad. Let's see, oh, is that good? That one's good. Per, uh, eh. That'll work. Not ideal. So this doesn't have to be super bulky at the front. It's just meant to give just a little more color and cover up some of this ugly ostrich. Fold the tip back so it doesn't pull out. So I don't have a ton of room, um, but I'm still going to jump just barely forward so I can come back and catch all this with my thread and make it a little more durable. I like it. One of a kind. Haven't tied one of these up before. So it looks like a lot. Um, when it gets wet though, will slim down so I like to make them a little bulkier than you think and get that water push. So since this is gonna be a somewhat dirty water fly, I'm not gonna use this if it's crystal clear water. So if it's dirty, I want something bright that makes a good silhouette and I also want a little water push. So these flies that I'm gonna use for dirtier water, I want them a little bulkier because I want them to push some water and trigger that fish's lateral line. I think we're good. I just gotta find my whip finishing tool. If I spend more than five minutes on a fly, I usually give it a couple extra whip finishes, just in case. So that's basically done, um, but just because I have it, I'm going to throw on a little bit of Loon UV clear finish. Let that soak in for just a second, get into the thread wraps, makes it that much more durable. Hit it with the UV light. Oh, that is bright. This fluorescent pink is too fluorescent. Like burn the fish's retinas. Cool. So that's it. So next time you see this fly, it'll be me pulling it out of a fish's mouth. Thanks for watching.